Hello and thank you for watching my video. My name is Astrid Krasnici. I'm CCNA and CCMP certified instructor. On this video, we are covering interconnecting Cisco network devices part one. IS is known as ICND1. This is for exam 100, 105. Now we're moving on to section 1.5 that says compare and contrast network topologies. We need to be able to explain what is net star network topology, mesh network topology, and hybrid network topology. So topology diagrams. Topology diagrams are mandatory for anyone working with network. Each type of network has both physical and logical topologies. Now, sometimes, you know, you go to the network and you might not find everything in a, two different topologies, physical and lo logical. But as long as they have some kind of topology, it's good enough. But in reality, you meant to have two types of topologies, physical and logical. It provides a visual map on how the network is connected. Now, these days, you can even have applications that will do this for you. Now, these are the there are two types of topology diagrams, including physical topology diagram. This refers to the physical layout of the devices and cabling. Identify the physical location of intermediary devices, configured ports, and cable installation. So as you can see it on the screen here on the right, I have, for example, that could be my physical topology. Here I have three servers, three, um, well, it's three, but imagine that there's many, yeah? So here I have the servers, I actually write down the server plus the cable, the connector, the, all in my diagram, including the intermediary devices and how they communicate. Now, the second type of topology is a logical topology. Now, this is defines a logical path on which the data will travel. For example, identify devices, ports, and IP address scheme. For example, as you can see there, the same topology as we had early, but this time I don't write, for example, my three servers. I can just write the names on the servers, the IP addresses, the ports maybe. It just identifies how the how the path is going to get from the source to the destination. So, for example, like earlier, I had the three servers. Here, I have only one line for the servers and the IP addresses for the servers, IP addresses for the end devices, and laptops on this side as well. Common physical wide area network topologies. Wide area network are commonly interconnected using the following physical topologies. For example, point to point. This is the simplest topology that consists on permanent link between two endpoints and it's easiest to configure as well. Hub and spoke, a, a wide area network version of the star topology in which a central site interconnect branch sites using point to point links. For example, as you can see here, here we have a hub that's connected to the spokes. The problem with this type of topology hub and spoke is that if the hub, maybe that's the headquarters that's connecting with the branches, if the headquarter link fails, the branches will not be able to communicate with each other. That's one of the disadvantages on hub and spoke topology. Better will be mesh topology. This topology provides high availability, but requires that every end system be interconnected to every other system. So in here, like we re we connect pretty much every every connection with every other connection. So every site with every other site. So he, the problem there is there is no the availability will be there because it doesn't matter if one of the sites fails then everybody else will still be able to communicate with each other but the problem with this is that or the disadvantage with this is going to have lots of connections you're going to have to pay uh, extra money for wide area network connection between the sites or you can have a hybrid hybrid is a variation of combination or combinations of any of the above topologies for example, a partial mesh is a hybrid topology. For example, the partial mesh is like when you don't connect, when you don't connect all the sites with each other. Maybe one site you don't you miss the connection. For example, here we have a, a mesh topology. Mesh topology is n times n minus one that we can have a connections. So, for example, here we have a five uh, five sites. So that's five, and then five minus one, which is four we're going to need 20 connections. Five minus, uh, N is 5, yeah? So 5, 5 minus 1 is 4, so 5 times 4 is 20. We're going to have 20 connections on the mesh topology. That's going to obviously increase all, all the money that we have to spend on the wide area network. So the better maybe choice would be if you want to save some money, maybe not have 
connected everything, everyone with everything else. Maybe just like don't have this connection, don't have this connection, and then maybe don't have this connection, and you still have some good availability. So there's no side, even if the one side case uh, fails, you still will be able to communicate. The common physical LAN topologies, so physical topologies define how the end systems are physically interconnected. In the shared media LANs, end devices can be interconnected using the following physical topologies. So the first topology that we are the most familiar with is star. End devices are, are connected to the central intermediate device. So for example, as you can see, the clients or end devices are connected to the switch. Again, same as with the hub and spoke topology, the problem here is that if the switch fails, these end devices will not be able to communicate with each other. The second type of topology in the LAN that we have is called extended star. In the extended star topology, additional Ethernet switches interconnect other star topologies. An extended star is an example of hybrid topology. So as you can see, we have a star, we just add another switch, that's an extended star. And this is a most likely on the local area network topology. The next type of topology that we had in LAN, we used to have, not anymore that much, is a bus topology. In the bus topology, all end devices are chained to each other and terminated in some form on each end. So we have the bus topology running. So we have a cable, copper cable running around the network, and then we connect end devices with the bus topology, the problem was like they they run in this uh, they run in the protocol called carrier sense, multiple access, collision detection, right? So when device they wanted to send something, it was listening to the carrier carrier sense, making sure that nobody else is sending. Multiple access meaning that everybody has got similar pr uh, priority to access multiple devices accessing multiple device accessing. Um, so, for example, if this device had to send some data to some other device, it will listen to the carrier, making sure that nobody else is sending. So it's going to start sending data. And then as the data travels, maybe to the device, all of the devices, they have to stop and not be able to transmit until this conversation has finished. For some reason, if one device, another device started sending data, like, for example, this device is sending data here to this device as well, now there's going to be a collision here and they're going to be able to detect that collision. There has been a collision and then they're going to like back off, back off and use a random timer to um, timer before they start again. And then they're going to throw, go again through using a, collision, a carrier sense, making sure that nobody else is sending. So this was a that was a problem through the bus. So the next type is ring topology. End systems are connected to their respective uh, neighbors, forming a ring. Ring topologies were used in large uh, legacy fiber distributed data interface uh, uh, and token ring interface. Now in the ring topology, what happened was that you had this token, yeah. So the token was like this. So it would go, the token will go around the ring. So if the, if the device receives a token, so this re the device receives a token, the token is empty, it's going to fill it with data. So it's going to be, I'm the source, my destination is here. So And then it's going to forward that token through. Now this device maybe has some data to send from here to here, but since the token is full, it can't fill it. So it says, okay, well, I'm just going to put it on the ring. And then... The, the device here looks at the token, token is full, it's just going to forward it on the ring until this device reads it and says, okay, well, that's for me. That token is for me, so I'm going to empty it and then put the empty token in the ring. So as the as a empty token goes, now the destination is not going to fill anything and then here, this destination is going to start, this source is going to fill it again. Maybe this source, that's it. But we have a token that's going around the ring. If the token is full, you can't put anything in it. If the token is empty, you can fill it from with the source and destination. That is a no contention base. Never, there was never be a collision. So this was very, very easy, um, a collision free a network. But the problem is, it's very slow because you have that token running around the network. In the star topology or extended star topology, every port on the switch is a collision domain. So for example, this is one collision domain. This is another collision domain. 
collision domain, collision domain, collision domain, collision domain, collision domain, collision domain, collision domain. So that's there's this four, eight, nine collision domain, and they work in one broadcast domain. That is a broadcast. That means that the switch they don't stop the broadcast. If one device, for example, sends a broadcast message, what the switch is going to do to that broadcast is going to flood it. So the switch is going to behave like a hub. It's going to send it to every port apart from the port they came in. So it's going to send it out of this port. It's going to send it out of this port and this port as well as to this switch here. Now this switch, when it gets that broadcast, is going to forward it that broadcast as well. So it's one broadcast domain, but we had nine collision domains. In the, for example, the bus topology, in the bus topology is one collision domain. All of this, they work into one collision domain. So we have one collision domain. It's one collision domain and one broadcast domain. So one collision domain and one broadcast domain as well. Broadcast domain. Meaning that if if one device is sending some data, all of the devices they have to stop and listen and wait. So we can either like the one device can send. Um, so one collision, it's like a one collision domain. If you think of it as a half duplex, so yeah, so half duplex. The switch works as a full duplex, full duplex. Now half duplex. It's like when you uh, walkie-talkie, when you can, when you can, like you can just press the button and then talk, but you can't talk and hear at the same time. While full duplex is like a mobile conversation. Thank you for watching this section 1.5. Compare and contrast network topologies. We talked about the star topology. We talked about mesh topology and hybrid topology. Please have a look at my other videos and don't forget to subscribe. This has been Astrid Krasnici. Bye bye.